it anyway because today's kind of a special day. And the reason it's a special day is because we finally got our psychiatric resident in training examination results. So every year in October, as a resident, you're going to take a test and it doesn't matter what type of residency um, you're in, it, it could vary depending on when you take the test, but in psychiatry, every October, we take this examination and it's a, kind of the only objective measure of your knowledge base that you have throughout the course of the year. So it's a way of kind of seeing, are you keeping up with the reading? Are you doing the necessary things to uh, understand psychiatry on a deeper level and not just clinically? So I have my results here sealed. It's got a smiley face on it, so I guess that means it's good. I don't know. So the first point I want to make about the Prite examination and that you'll notice right off the bat is that I'm holding in my hands two booklets. So this examination is administered through questions that are printed in these two booklets and then you're going to fill in your best answer choice on a Scantron. So similar to like what you might have done in grade school when you've taken standard, standardized exams at that stage in your education. So this is a little bit dated, I would say. Majority of examinations that you're going to take in medical school and all of your medical licensing examinations are taken on a computer and they are in an electronic format. In fact, during my med medical school training, I did not take a single exam on uh, pen and with pen and paper. So all the examinations are administered these days electronically. So this is a little different than a lot of other tests that you've taken. Not that that really makes much of a difference, I don't think, in terms of your, you know, in terms of what you need to prepare for, or how you need to think about the exam. Just kind of a, a detail that I wanted to share. The other thing to remember about this examination is that it's done under standardized conditions, so there's going to be time limits. The time limit is two and a half hours per section. So it's a total of five hours altogether. Um, you're going to have two sections, two and a half hours to complete each section. And if you average that out based on questions per minute, it works out to being one question per minute. The next piece that I want to discuss is how to read and interpret your results, right? So when you get this examination back and you're anxious to see how did you do, what was your score, et cetera, et cetera, it's a little confusing because it's not as it's not similar to maybe some other examinations that you're taking. And every one of these exams kind of has a different way of scoring or grading you and the interpretation can vary depending on how that's how depending on whatever rules that particular uh, exam is following. So what you get with the Prite examination is you get a sheet like so. So this will be a printout of your score and in the left columns they'll give kind of global scores and what you'll notice about the global scores is that there's three specific areas that this test is is looking at it's looking at your neuroscience score your clinical neurology score and your clinical psychiatry score so it's going to look at those three areas and you're going to be provided a number a raw score as well as a standard score so the raw score is actually how many questions you got right in each section and for psychiatry, generally speaking, a third of the questions, about 33%, are neurology and neuroscience questions. So there's a fair amount of neurology and neuroscience that you should be prepared to, to work with and that you should be prepared to know. And we'll talk later videos about what resources I think are important and how to, how to score really, really well on this exam. So you have those three sections. You're going to get a raw score, which is going to be the number you got correct out of the total number of questions that are in the exam. And then you're going to get what's called a standard score. So for this examination, for the Prite examination, that standard score is going to range anywhere from 200 to 800. So on the low end, it will be 200. On the highest end, you could score 800 at the, at the top end of the spectrum. So that will cover sort of your global scores and then they'll break it down by a few additional things. They'll break it down by your psychiatry subscores. So they'll look at each section that they test it in psychiatry and you'll have a subscore which will provide again the raw score and the standard score for that section. But probably the areas 
and that will help you determine which areas that you really need to work on. So like for instance, if your development and maturation score is low, then you know you need to go back and review details about human development and psych psychiatric development over time. So you need to look at that. If your score on diagnostic procedures is low, then you need to go and look at diagnostic procedures used in psychiatry. So that helps you to kind of narrow down which sections you need more work in and which sections you're better at. Now, the other part there is the milestones. So they look at each of these milestones and there's six of them total. So the ones that we have here are development, psychopathology, clinical neuroscience, psychotherapy, somatic therapies, and practice of psychiatry. So that you're gonna get a score for every one of those sections as well. And again, you're gonna get a raw score, which is the number of questions you got correct out of the total number of questions in that section. And then that standard score on the range, uh, uh, in the range of anywhere from 200 to 800, depending on how well you did. To the right of this score sheet, they're gonna give you your rank within the program, and they're gonna first give you your rank in each of those individual sections that I talked about, so neuroscience, clinical neurology, clinical psychiatry, and then they're going to give your rank based on the breakdown of the psychiatric subscores and milestones, right? So all of those places, they're going to give you um, your breakdowns, essentially, where you scored within the program. And they're also gonna show you where you rank not only with general psychiatry advanced residents, so those are people in your, um, in your year, but they're also gonna show you where you score amongst people in the program as a total. So the total number of residents within your program. So there's actually a lot of information here in each section and it does kind of, again, help you to kind of see where you're at within the program, where you are, you're at with relation to your milestones, and also how you're doing in the particular areas of psychiatry that you need to be proficient in. And then finally, you get the mean standard scores against peer groups. So what they do is they look at US general psychiatry advanced residents. So those are residents in, in your year and uh, ones that are, that are further along. Then you're gonna see the all US general psychiatry residents. And that's gonna be given as the standard score that's on that scale of 200 to 800. So they're gonna give you sort of a mean standard score for each group. And then that kind of sets the bar for passing and failing. A lot of programs will look at that score and say anyone that scored below it really needs to revisit those sections and work on it. Anyone that scored above the number it, then you're good, you're pretty much on, on par with the average psychiatry resident in the United States. So that, it, that again is helpful because if you have to remediate or, re, or and remediation basically means you're gonna go back through those plans and that program again and have, to, and have to revisit some of these questions and figure out why you got them wrong. Now generally speaking, that mean standard score for all US residents is somewhere around 500. So it can be a little bit lower, can be a little higher, depends on the year, depends on the test, but in general, 500 is a good number to shoot for. So if you're getting 500 in your neuroscience section, if you're getting 500 in your clinical neurology, and 500 in your clinical psychiatry, you're doing pretty well. You're on par with majority of the residents in the United States. The last part that I wanna just ch chat about real quick is the norm rank. So the norm rank is gonna be a percentage basically, and it's gonna, is a percentile. It's gonna go from zero to 99. And that's gonna tell you where you're scoring. So are you in the 99th percentile, or are you in the 50th percentile, et cetera. And it's gonna give you that percentile for each of the global scores, neuroscience, clinical neurology, clinical psychiatry. And it's also gonna give you, based on your total score, a norm rank. So um, for the past two for the past two years, I've been in the 99 percentile for all overall as well as in mo most of the subsections. So for the past two years, I've been able to achieve you know the top say one percent of psychiatry residents taking this exam. And in future videos, we'll go over how to score in the 99 percentile uh, for the Pride exam. And we'll talk more about whether or not this is relevant for your ABPM boards and whether or not this will help you in the future clinically. There's lots of debate and argument, 
but I think we could save that for another video. So I just wanted to kind of go over my score sheet, um, see where my rankings are, as well as uh, some introductory information about the exam in case you're unfamiliar with it. So if you like the videos, please subscribe, um, give us a like here, and we'll continue making content about psychiatry training and everything you need.